So hey friends, welcome to this week's video. And I know I haven't gotten you a video out to y'all in a couple of weeks, I think, but work's just been crazy recently and I've had to get some contracts out the door, but finally got that sort of spree of them done. So I finally have some time to record and get a video for y'all to watch. So I do appreciate that you guys have been continuing subscribing and commenting and it's good to see some new faces in the comments and definitely been trying to keep up with that even though I'm not able to get content out there. So if you need to talk to me, definitely in the comments or any of my social medias. Still a good way to get contact with me if you guys have any requests or questions about anything that I've went over. But to get into this week's review, we're going to go over a microphone that I picked up I think either Indiegogo or Kickstarter a while ago. Uh, it was just so small, so nice to look at. And it was also the curator gave pretty solid samples, which was really attractive to me. And th the reason why that was really important to me is because I'm very hopeful <laughs> in the fact that hopefully we will get back to normal life. I will continue traveling again and that I will need a portable setup um, with microphones that are easier to carry around and, and transport around. Um, so that was the main appealing factor is that it was super high quality. It sounded robust enough and it was easy to pack away. So that was the big selling point there. And if you're asking what that microphone is, it was the Tula and it is this tiny guy and I've been recording on it this entire time, but yeah, right there. But yeah, so hopefully you guys have been enjoying what you've been hearing so far from this microphone and I apologize for any handling noises that you're hearing, but I'm trying to freestyle this a little bit just so you guys get a good sense of this. However, I will be recording this entire review using this microphone so you guys get a good understanding of the sound signature that comes out of the microphone. And I'm going to be really testing the limits to see if it will work for my various use cases and understand if all the accessories that came with it are useful. So if you guys would like to continue with me, let's get into the specs and see what I feel about this. The Tula mic is a wonderfully small package that comes in cream, as well as black, red, and a new seafoam color they've introduced. There's plenty of storage, it has quite a long recording time, which makes it amazing for portable recording. The Tula controls consist of soft tactile buttons split across the sides of the mic. The right side houses the mic gain and recording features, as well as the power button, while the left side has your playback features, but also a mic mute, noise cancellation, as well as a toggle between the uni and omni mic modes. You're currently listening to the uni mic mode. Um, yeah, it just seems like the, you know, I would like all the recording stuff on one side and all the playback stuff on one side um, just to make it a little bit more cohesive. It just seems like you're crossing sides a lot um, b between your recording functions and your recording, sorry, your recording functions and your playback functions. It would be just cool if there's like a dedicated side for each. Um, so I'm not kind of guessing where those are. Small pet peeve, but it's still something that I think uh, could have been thought through a slightly better. On the accessory front, the mic comes with a USB-C cable for charging and computer interface, as well as a stand and a microphone stand adapter. If you opted into the crowdfunding campaign, it also came up with this nifty little case that holds everything quite snugly. I'm not sure if Tula will be selling these in the future as a separate item, but I didn't see that option on their website nor on Amazon. Getting into the stand adapters, they both are made of metal with a nickel finish and have a nice feel to them. The dedicated stand can fold into the mic for easy portability, but can also be folded out to tilt the mic at various angles on a table. However, in most cases, I'm assuming you'll need more height to properly record with this microphone, so the mic stand adapter that is included is perfect for some flexibility. If it's all US mic stands, however, if you're using a UK standard, you will need to buy a UK to US adapter from a third party source. Moving on to the three and a half millimeter jack, you can use any TRS lavalier mic with the Tula. However, Tula does offer their own sold separately. So I will be using that for this part of the review, which will be starting right about now. The Tula Lav comes with a windscreen and clips and is a simple plug and play. The cable is about five feet long and it can be controlled via the gain controls on the right side of the Tula mic. 
the lav plus the tula combo is a very good option for body recording and can be easily hidden away to keep your shot clean of wires and mics while retaining wonderful audio clarity. But tell me how you think the lav sounds. So the cool little bit that is here is that you can also check how you are monitoring if you plug in through a three and a half. So not only does this act as a lav, but it also acts as a three and a half monitoring. So if you have any of those headphones, and unfortunately the only ones I have are my conferencing headphones, you can use them to hear yourself. It is a little bit more robotic. It's not exactly what comes out of the microphone. However, um, it's a good representation and can help you with your gain. So, you know, you can adjust the gain of the microphone and bring it down or bring it up however you need. So this is a really good way to get an understanding of how loud you are and how it's rendering because there's no sort of graphical interface or LCD here. It's just very simple, just a device. This is gonna be very important. So if you are running and gunning with this and looking to do recordings, I would suggest you bringing a pair of three and a half uh, jack headphones for your use to make sure that you can use it. But overall, this works pretty well. I like this feature. <laughs> you know what? These have a microphone on them. I wonder if... Let's try it. I doubt this will work, but um, yeah. So this is the regular Tula mic. If I swing this down, ooh, if that works. Yeah. Does that work? Does this render? I doubt it does. But we're going to try it. Definitely not monitoring through it, so I don't think it's working. But we'll check the recording and see what's going on. But uh, hopefully, that would be dope. Moving back to the main microphone, let's compare the two mic variations that the tool offers and stack it against my AT2020 and my H4n. Both devices fall in or under that $200 price point, which the Tula costs. I will not be adding the lav comparison because the AT2020 is a cardioid condenser mic, and I don't have an XLR lav for the H4n. I will simply be using the onboard microphones for the zoom. So as you guys have been hearing, this is how the uni mode on the Tula mic sounds. Just listen for the clarity, see how it is uh, focused on the vocals. Uh, not really the omnidirectional, but we will switch over to the omnidirectional mic now. So this is how voice sounds in the Omni mode. You can see if the voice is still focused on just my voice or if you can hear more external or 360 noises from the other side of the microphone. So this recording is on the Audio-Technica AT2020. Again, listen for the clarity of my voice and how deep it sounds in comparison to the other microphones. But yeah. That's the sample for this one. So this is my voice being recorded off the H4N. Again, this is just the onboard microphones um, and this device is around $200, just like the Tula and the AT2020. Listen to how clear my voice sounds and tell me what you guys think in the comments. <laughs> So in terms of the Tula sound performance, I think it did remarkably well against the Audio-Technica AT2020 and the Zoom H4n. I will say that the condenser obviously wins out just because it does have a little bit more air as well as it just sounds a little bit more natural and just a little bit more robust in terms of the sound. I, I will say that obviously it's a condenser mic and it's dedicated for this, so it, it sounds 
it will have that sort of characteristic to it. But the the uh, Tula does a really good job about sort of replicating those sort of things. When comparing or comparing to the uh, H4n, they're very similar. In in fact, I actually prefer the Uni mode of the uh, the Tula for voices. Um, again, the Omni mode is still good. However, I think that's more for if you're having multiple people in the room or for instruments. The Omni mode was good for instrumentation. Um, and I think that's just because it helps get the the full sound of the room rather than just the voice. But the Uni mode definitely won out. And again, with this uh, Zoom, it just sounded a little bit more clear on the Tula as well as a little bit more robust. So I like that sound a little bit better. Um, however, there's also other things to consider here, like controls. Obviously, the AT2020 is by itself has no controls with it. You do need an H4n, or you need like an IT or a, was a Scarlet 2i2, or some sort of interface to give you some kind of gain control or control over that microphone. So while this is $200, you do need to have additional investment to actually make it work. So that's something to consider here if you're trying to keep on budget of $200. And again, the Zoom has very similar controls in terms of gain. It does give you a little bit more functionality because you can see the different tracks you're on as well as um, you know you can organize things and there's just a little bit more visual representation while the Tula is all within here with just press buttons and you have to kind of guess. So that kind of comes into like what technology is available for these mics. Obviously, again, the AT2020 is not gonna have anything crazy special. It's just a mic on itself. You will need something else to give that sort of control and technology behind it. Um, however, the Tula probably wins out here because it does have the noise canceling as well as the mic change mode. The Zoom obviously does not have noise canceling modes on here. Um, however, while it doesn't have the ability to change your mic mode, you can change the direction or like the, the angle in which the recording on the onboard mics have, as well as you have XLR inputs on the bottom, therefore you have some flexibility on what other microphones you have. But again, if we're talking about a $200 price point, that's really just saying that, you know, this has everything you kind of need for that $200 without additional things. I don't need an XLR cable, I don't need microphones, I don't need additional things. Um, I would say that the Tula probably all around gets you what you need um, with some expansion with the lab and all that sort of stuff at a $200 flat. So that's something to consider here as you're looking at options for microphones. Overall, I think Tula did a wonderful job with this microphone because, I mean, it is just so aesthetically pleasing. It's so small and handheld and it just seems like very well thought out and put together products. I will say that the audio is something that I could easily service. It could be, definitely be something that I could use for future projects. There's just certain areas where, you know, it doesn't open up or have the full breadth of the sound as like, let's say, one of my condenser microphones. And that's just because there's less air passing through it. Um, it's just not as fine as some of those. However, for something this size, it's extremely, extremely solid and way more robust than I was expecting. So I'm happy with the sound signature. I can definitely see myself using this. Uh, you know, doing mobile recording if I want to get some of these like voiceover shots while I'm traveling or, you know, if me and my friend get into deep conversation and we want to just shoot a podcast really fast unofficially, that'll be make this really easy. So I think that it's going to be an extremely fun thing to add because it'll just give me more availability to make content on the go and, you know, more impromptu. The thing that I will say that they could probably improve on is like some kind of visual uh, like aspect to this. I do love that it is so simple and the, all the buttons, once you get used to them, are very intuitive. Um, however, when you're talking about post editing and like likely you're using these, um, you know, li likely you're doing some sort of recording where you need to know what track you were on understanding what the good track was so like knowing that I'm going to use this track to end the video and I'm on track 17 would be awesome to know. However, now I have to scrub through the file, kind of hear the first sample and understand if the, the video and the audio are the right matching. So that's a little bit annoying and kind of slowing down my workflow. But over that overall, I think this is just be good as long as I'm using it for a limited purpose. I'm not doing a ton of different takes. Again, this would be really good for any sort of impromptu content that I want to take or some things where I know that I'm not going to get multiple rehearsals or multiple takes of it. Um, so I think on the go, it's going to be beautiful.
But overall, I think I can recommend it. It really comes down to, again, if you guys like the samples of, of what you heard so far, and as well as the price point. Again, I got it on, on Indiegogo or Kickstarter, so it came at a cheaper price. However, I do believe that they've, it's, it's a decent amount more expensive. So I'm going to put the price up here, but that's what it's retailing for. And if I remember correctly, um, it's around the same as an H4N or H6N. So those have wonderful sound. And I think I put um, some samples in this video so you can check if that kind of price discrepancy or the price of this meets your standards or if you want to upgrade and just go for the H4N or H6N. But hopefully this whole video and listening to me throughout this entire thing has helped you understand if this is worth it for you. It's worth it for me. I have it. I'm going to keep it around. It may not be my go-to for every video, but definitely something I'm going to keep in my backpack just in case. Uh, anyway, that's the video, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It is a little bit different with me doing so much handheld with the actual device that I'm reviewing. Um, but I hope you liked it. Um, again, thank you so much for keeping with me. I guess I, I know I go out inactive sometimes, but I'm really trying to keep to this whole like one week uh, or one video a week schedule to make sure that you guys get consistent content and we're continually going to the channel. But I do appreciate you guys commenting and liking even when in my absence um, until I get to talk with you because it still helps the channel grow. And we've been growing pretty significantly and pretty strongly um, in a way that it's kind of heartwarming. Thank you guys. But anyway, um, yeah, if you guys like the video, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, doing all the things you normally do on a video that you like and love. If you're new here, thank you so much um, for checking out my video. And if you're, you know, an OG, keep, keep engaging and giving me ideas for new videos. Anyway, that's all we, I got for you guys. As always, appreciate you. Peace.